So David, can you tell us where your area of expertise lies in electrical control? Um, I've been the international expert on six occasions for Australia and on three occasions I was elected as the uh, chief expert and that's been a fantastic experience for me to work with some of the you know, great people not only in Australia but across the world. So David, your area of expertise I guess you would say lies in more the, the environmental sustainability side of the electrical control. I think I've developed an interest in it, mainly coming from a country area where power supplies aren't always reliable. Or the Where about from the country? Um, I'm from Dubbo and uh, originally from Cobo, I lived on a property as a, uh, I grew up on a property as a child, so we only had low energy supplies. Okay. So for that reason, uh, I see the, the need for there and I think the cost of energy, the way we're using energy resources, we need to do something about that today. So what are some of the projects that, that you're interested in? Are we talking about uh, solar power? What, what are some of the projects? Well, I, I think uh, the, the easy ones and what we've been able to develop here, it's not only what we generate, but also our usage. We can go to low usage devices, but uh, what we're trying to demonstrate here is how we can feed our electrical power that we generate, and we have a wind generator, and that will be sufficient to drive the lights in the house. This, uh, so this here could actually drive all the lights in the house? Well, it depends on the size of the house, and right. providing you went to low energy lights. Okay. What else have we got here? The other one we have is a PV cell, and if you come around here a little bit, we can uh, just see this. So we just put a PV cell up here. We'd need an array of those normally, and that is um, an 80 watt PV cell. What's a, what's a PV cell? PV cell or solar cell. And when you consider that we have the highest solar energy uh, output or receivable in the world, we have very low energy. Denmark generates six sorry 30 percent of their their uh, energy electrical energy but from re renewable sources. We only generate 05 percent. So it's extremely low. So why is it important that we actually, as a community or a country, switch over to some of these more environmentally friendly? Well, I think, yeah, the current topic of uh, greenhouse gases, uh, you know, in my lifetime, which I've seen the changes that are occurring in the environment, and if we can reduce that impact. I wonder what's happening in other countries, you know, Europe and that, and having been there 10 years ago, they were more into the recycling than what we are today. So some of these competitors here, uh, is it what you're trying to teach them how to be a bit more environmentally friendly in when they take up their, their trade? Yeah, what I did was trying to create a, an environmental awareness and we, I had five students work on this. We set up a website, the Apprentice Voice, and they each had a project. One was looking at solar cells, the other was looking at the wind generator, uh, the other one was looking at uh, batteries and storage of the electrical energy, one was looking at reducing energy consumption in industry, and the other looked at reducing the energy consumption domestically. Is it a big topic at the moment trying to actually convince the public to actually that we need to switch over to some of these more environmentally friendly forms of electricity? I think uh, the fact that energy in Australia is reasonably cheap, both for heating and for uh, uh, electricity, and heating's our biggest use. While ever we're getting that at a lower price, people don't see the impact. If we look at what happened in Sydney over the last few years where they had to go into water restrictions. People then accepted the water restrictions. But, you know, we'd have to go back to the late uh, 70s, early 80s when we had restrictions of power because we just didn't have generating capacity. So can one person actually really make a difference, do you believe? Well, I think just making people more aware and hopefully what we've got here with our project that people see what they can do. This is reasonably low cost. And I think as PV cells reduce in cost, the slither technology that's been developed by the CSIRO should make PVCs considerably cheaper. Where do you see it in 10 years? Do you think that this stuff will take off even more or do you think it's going to be an uphill battle to try and convince the public to actually take, embrace some of these projects? It's got to become cost effective for the public, therefore the green energy has got to be reducing uh, in putting that in yourself, but also you know, if we get carbon trading the cost of energy will rise to cover that. An example is Queensland now actually, if you generate energy that feeds back into their grid system, you get paid more for that energy than if you're buying that energy from them. So people are paying a premium for green energy.
if some of these projects are really that simple that they can actually put power back into the electrical grid, why haven't we actually taken up some of these projects? Is it purely because of cost? I think it's purely because of cost. You know, the system that we've got here, to make it work, we would have probably $10,000 addition cost onto your house. The people need to remember that that system there would supply their electrical energy forever at nil cost other than a little bit of cleaning. Is an exciting time for you in this industry? Uh, well, I'm drawing to the end of it, I suppose. So um, Pass on your knowledge yeah. to the next generation. Yeah, and that's their idea. And I think you know, the, the awareness that they got out of it and um, what they were able to research and find out was uh, pretty phenomenal. It actually taught me stuff to what they found.